Hypnospace Outlaw is brought to you by a series of developers, including Tendershot, That Which Is Media, and Michael Lash, and is published by No More Robots. It comes out on March 12, 2019, and costs $19.99, and transports you back to the internet era of the 90s, where there were a smaller amount of trolls, the sounds of dial-up, and more horrible CSS color choices and ridiculous game page designs. I have a significant chunk of the game done, about eight to nine hours, and I think I'm actually really close to the end, but I'll get to that later. But before I begin this critical eye review of the game, this key was obtained from the publisher, No More Robots, for the purposes of review. That won't change my opinion of the game in the end, but you should know that because of FTC guidelines, as well as the whole morals thing, you know? So let me set the basics for the game. You're part of this new experimental hypnospace, which allows sleeping users to keep active in the night using a hypno headband. And that is 100% an idea that needs to happen because I have way too many games to play and this would be perfect for that. But it's sort of like an augmented virtual reality. Regardless, you are a hypnospace enforcer, and the best way I can describe it is that you're a YouTube hero. Your job is to find content that goes against the rules of hypnospace, whether it be threatening users directly via web pages or showing copyrighted content on their sites. Now, to show an example of how this is done in the context of the game, I'm going to make a fictitious scenario to solve within the game's confides so that I don't spoil anything within it, but show you an example of what you could be looking for and how the gameplay is. All right, so I've logged into the game and this is my HypnoOS desktop. Yeah, it's a little bit messy, but I felt like it was appropriate to the time period. It's a little bit all over the place. But in terms of the scenario that I'm going to teach you guys, at least the fictitious one, there are two things that are important. There are the Enforcer Dashboard, and there is the Explorer. So let's start with the Enforcer Dashboard. So this is basically your email client. This is where you're going to get you know, messages from people, but in particular, you're going to get messages from Dispatch having cases for you. These cases range from content infringement to harassment to things like extra legal commerce, aka fake PayPals, fake Bitcoin, so on and so forth. This is going to help you focus at the start of the game to get accustomed to what type of game this is because the best way I can describe it is a mixture of a detective game with hardcore hallucinogenic drugs. But what is the scenario that I'm going to put forward for you guys? Well, I'm going to do a content infringement one. Okay, so... For the scenario in question, I'm going to do in a content infringement. Basically, I'm trying to look for content that's being hosted on some of these sites that is illegal. Now, there's a ban in the game called Freezer, and in the game, they are officially recognized in terms of, okay, this is the actual band in question, this is their content, they're giving it for everyone to see. But... Here's the thing, for this scenario, so that I don't spoil anything for you guys in terms of some of the solutions, I'm gonna focus on that. So there's a couple of ways that I can go about looking for that content. I of course can browse from the main homepage, take a look where I think could be. Okay, maybe it's in Teentopia, maybe it's, you know, partly in there. Okay, love Squid, Ashley's, Consular, Eh, none of these look like Freezer. Maybe it's on one of the web pages of these kids because, hey, maybe they like things like that. So let's look at, okay, Reb Roof. Uh, I'm not seeing anything. I'm seeing a Splatoon ripoff or Mega Man ripoff. Okay, no. Obviously, this isn't going to be very effective in terms of looking for some of this content, but as I will reveal later on, sometimes you've got to do that. No. You've got other ways. In particular, you can search. So I've actually already got it here, Freezer. And this will search sites for the tag of Freezer. Oh, wait a minute, why is it not the, oh right, it's not Freezer, because they're the cool kids, it's Free 3 -zer. 
And lo and behold, look what comes up. Information about which pages have Freezer listed as a tag or somewhere in its content. So let's take a first look. Let's look at Cool Punk. Okay, we got some music playing. Yeah, Cool Punk is alive and well. Freezer was not lip sync. Okay, so we see the band here. So maybe there's some content. Oh, he, I bought his single six times. Can you do better? And it looks like he's got a link. So let's take a look. Ah, there we go. So in this fictitious scenario, I found a link to purchase the actual um, album, the limited Hypnospace exclusive single. But in the scenario in question, let's assume that this was illegally hosted. So what I would do is go and go to one of these, click on content infringement, click on it, and then click on this. Now the reason why you're not seeing this and you've got this sort of grayed out is because this is towards the end of the game at this point, so you don't necessarily want to show that. But regardless, this would then send a message off like what you see here off to the admins of Hypnospace, and they would determine whether or not it's a real or fake, you know, copyright infringement. If it's real, you'll get some hypno coins and the content will be taken down. If not, well, they'll pretty much say, eh, don't do that again. There doesn't, see, doesn't seem to be a punishment for making mistakes, which I do think is a little bit off, but I understand that with the nature of the game and how it's going to play out, that's going to be a problem if you did it that way. Okay, you're probably saying to yourself, Dragnix, this seems pretty easy. Just search on the tags that you think you need and go from there. Not so simple. Yeah, early on, that's going to be pretty much it. You're going to search a term. You're going to find things in the first couple of cases. But even around the third or fourth case, you're going to run into a scenario where you're asked for four copyright infringements and you only found three via the search terms. What are you going to do then? Well, that's where your detective skills come in, and that's one of the strongest elements about Hypnospace Outlaw. Take, for example, if I go to the Freezer fan page. Now, there's going to be information listed on the page, and that information could be useful in a variety of ways. Of course, I've got the tags over here, and I could search on things like, I don't know, the lyrics, the album, you know, the groups that they're associated with because they're the Joe Man Street Team and the music groups. But even within this page, I may be able to get information. His new band Cruncher. Wait, hold on a second. Chowder Man is new brand Cruncher. We're also at the Cool Fest. Maybe somebody hosted some information there and I'll be able to find freezer information there. Maybe there's something like the lyrics of Chill It Right. Maybe if I search on something like that, that I'm going to be able to find some illegal content. It's you taking the information that's being presented to you and understanding, okay, if I were someone to host some illegal activity, what would I do? What would I do so that the people who could find it were able to find it, but people who may not necessarily want to find it for that content, but for more, you know, governmental purposes, AKA, you know, throwing some laws and some violations your way, that you make sure that they don't find it. You've got to act as a detective throughout the game. And it's not just things like that. It's things like understanding what you're looking for. Because once you get past the first several cases, they'll just open up the game to you. They're basically going to say, okay, you've got enough information on your plate. You've got enough information about what you need to do. Go find the copyright infringement. Go find the problems in the game. And that's where things get a little bit tricky. Now, one of the things that is different about Hypnospace Outlaw, at least in my mind, is that when you get to that middle game, when you don't necessarily have a specific task in front of you, that's where things can get a little bit interesting and frustrating. The thing is, is that the game will guide you once you sort of get your legs out in front of you. So you'll get, you know, let's say two copyright infringements reported and it will determine a pattern and a case will be made at that point. And then you will be able to find more cases like that, getting a little bit more information from the admins. But here's the thing, without giving exactly what you're looking for at those points, 
There is so much information to go through in this game, and you're going to get lost, especially if you're like me and have ADD tendencies. From like one minute I was trying to find a program that could basically do the equivalent of unzipping files that I'd found, and then running across a conspiracy regarding an Egyptian eye, the Horus. And while doing that, I lost the information that I had accumulated just a second ago because I found another string of things to follow. Yeah, I understood some of it, but with the amount of detail that you need in some of these cases, you're going to get lost. At a certain point, I used a notebook on my desk writing things down. Despite the fact that you do have in-game post-it notes and other tools like the stamp tool, which allows you to favorite certain pages and quickly switch to them via a click. But there's so much detail in the game that you have to write things down. You have to remember this information because there's just so much to go on. There's just about 50, 60 pages that you may start with and then you're going to find the sub pages, you're going to find unlisted pages, you're going to find file systems of players who, you know, okay, they have content hosted there. I'm going to have to remember, okay, what content is hosted where? There's a lot here, and it can be overwhelming for certain types of players. Now, searching for things is fun and frustrating at the same time, but one of the elements that sort of vaults Hypnospace Outlaw into a echelon of great games is that it's able to use the themes and sort of the scenarios and the lack of definition in those scenarios to sort of make you question things. For example, there are times in the game where you're going to be asked to, you know, report harassment. But what exactly is harassment? In some cases, like what you see in front of you, yeah, okay, that is definite harassment. You are going after a specific person, you are, you know, getting in their face almost, you're basically saying they're nothing. Okay, that's pretty cut and dry. But in some cases, it may just be insulting the person or calling them a name. Is that harassment? Well, technically, if you look at the definition on the page, yeah, it is. But sometimes you feel like maybe it's not, maybe it isn't. So you don't know whether to report it or not. But without any weaknesses in terms of reporting, you end up reporting it anyway. But it's details like that that make you wonder, well, wait a minute. If you think about YouTube right now, there's a parallel to that. And it's part of the storytelling here that is under the surface. The stories that are being told here are great, but it's the thoughts behind it, the things that make you think, well, wait a minute, there's a real parallel to this in my life, especially as a YouTuber, that really take the game to that next level. Now, not all the decisions here are cut and dry. There are certain ones that I do appreciate how they try to be inclusive with some of the mechanisms here for players who may not necessarily be puzzle-minded, but I wonder if they hurt the overall theme of the game. So for example, you'll come across pages that are protected via passwords, and you'll have to piece together the password via hints. For example, there is a page that gives some information about HypnoOS, and in particular, there's a page that has password protocols or password recommendations on how to make a strong password. And so you realize that, you try to find the information that they suggested there for people who seem like they may not necessarily think about passwords that much. And they should get you into their accounts. But one of my first attempts showed that I was close to the password by showing me this. Wait, one letter of it? with how long it seems to be on the page? That seems weird, doesn't it? So I was like, well, wait a minute. If you gave me one letter and the length of it, or what it seems like the length of it, let me try something. Let me just put in one letter of the length of the password here, along with the letter that I actually found. Oh, I see, you just filled in the letter where it was in the word. So I could just keep on trying until I guessed the password. Now this isn't straightforward because if you do this, you could end up having passwords that are like, you know, somebody has a password labeled password and somebody has a password labeled password with a zero instead of an O and it will actually conflict. It'll say there's more than one password with this here. But if you're smart about it, you can figure out passwords via this system 
and it feels like a brute force method, which I can understand for the sake of accessibility. The fact is, if I get stuck on a puzzle, if I get stuck on something, I'm still able to get around it. But I don't think that was the intention of the developers for me to get around this portion, which seems to be a significant detective portion of the game. So I'm up and down on that. I do want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below because literally I spent a good amount of time thinking about whether or not to dock points or whether or not to give a yay or nay for this and I really never came up with a conclusion. Okay, I've talked a little bit about the gameplay, but there's another reason that many people have this on their wish list. The 90s internet style and its unique presentation and sort of, I don't want to say meme nature, but out there content. Now, if you're a modern day graphic designer, I have to warn you that playing Hypnospace Outlaw may cause nausea, upset stomach, or diarrhea due to the sheer assault of the design on screen onto your eyes, and to have Pepto-Bismol on hand. With that said though, it's perfect for what the game tries to capture, the 90s internet style. These were the pioneers in the old days, and I'm amazed at how well that the Hypnosface team captured the old style. There were things like ridiculous over-the-top use of colors, horribly placed design elements, because at that time, it was just getting the code up and running. It wasn't necessarily beautiful, but people tried. People tried to make these pages unique, tried to make them stand out, and you got this. Now, you also got the broken elements. You have pages in this game that have broken elements. You know, they have logos where they're not supposed to. Things are pasted all over the place, and it perfectly captures what type of Wild West it was at that point. However, this doesn't transfer over to the actual Hypno OS portion, which has that mixture of a Windows 3.1 and an old Macintosh-like aesthetic that has some modern conveniences here, but it all feels nostalgic. Again, this game is obviously aimed for 90s kids, for kids of the 80s who were growing into the 90s, and it captures it perfectly. But it's taken to the next level with the sound and the music. Of course you get the little beeps and boops with confirmations, but I do like the fact that the game gives you downloadable themes so you can change it to a guy going, yeah, or something along that line. There's the music that hits a variety of qualities that match the page that it's going for and trying to represent, but it's also of an appropriate quality. I'd expect the punk kid, who's obviously a bully, to have music on his page that seems, well, awful in a screechy kind of way. And the game does do that nicely. It also has one of the most ridiculous jingles that I've ever heard that buried its way into my head and wouldn't get out for several days. And just because you guys have to suffer it too, here it is. Granny Cream's hot butter ice cream. We take the hot butter, mix it with the ice cream. Freeze it up, cool, you can see it on your screen. Put it in your microwave, make it real hot like a soup or a dip. We call it heat and sip. Very tasty and healthy too. Before you say anything, you're welcome. One thing I haven't hit on yet is the story, and it's one of the hardest parts to talk about due to the detective type nature of the game. Granted the way that Hypnospace is designed, you've got a ton of side stories in conjunction with the main plot that revolves around your position as enforcer, which takes you on a journey of what you'd expect out of a detective plot, starting with basics, digging and finding underhanded and more things under the surface, betrayal, intrigue, all the fixings of a good mystery. The main plot is written reasonably well and has a few twists worth working your way through, despite the fact that the characters are not ones that you'll necessarily get attached to. So the best way to explain the quality of the side stories here is to show you a couple because this game is a visual storytelling element to it that I think is important to 
point out because some people are not going to necessarily get the greatest amount of information out of it but for you guys i want to show you a little bit without you know focusing on what would be the spoiler parts or the important parts so I use the stamp system here to be able to identify a couple of pages for us to take a look at. So I use the house in question and we're going to start with our angsty teenager, Zane. Zane rocks 14 even though he's now 15. Now the storytelling here is based on how they created their page and so you can see from here, you know, he's a little bit over the top. He is that sort of angsty teenager that feels like he needs to be an adult. I mean, you could just see it in the pictures here. Here's his real pictures without his eyes for some reason, because that's creepy. But you could also see the drawing of himself, how he puts, you know, hair on his chin, how he looks older, how he looks a little bit more bulked up. He's got a leather jacket. He's got the beads around his neck and the one ear in the earring. One ear in the earring? One earring in the ear. So he obviously wants to become more adult. He wants to be the badass. He has a girlfriend, supposedly, based on this year. He makes comics. I mean, a little bit, you know, satanic comics, you know, but, you know, he's a kid. He's just learning about the world. See, this is what you will find in these pages. You'll find these characters and what they're about. Sometimes they'll give it to you straight up. Things like, okay, he's in the 10th grade, he's 15, he loves Techno Wizard, he won the second an annual Dumpty Dumpy's Chaos Award, which, okay, great. It's this kind of information that you can dig into and understand, hey, maybe this kid is not necessarily the greatest, or maybe this kid has a little bit lost, you know? It's up to you to determine how you bring this character to life in your mind and it will be sort of driven by the detective part of the story. Let's actually move on to another page here. Let's move on to a conspiracy page. Trennis is a lie. I'm pretty sure this is a picture of an 1860s, you know, Civil War general, but he's apparently Harry Whisker Stone, and it's his great, 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 great uncle. The real inventor of the game we know as Trennis today. And it goes into detail about how, you know, this was stolen from, to, you know, this guy. Stuff that you'd expect from a conspiracy site. Stuff that you would expect from, you know, someone who's had a little bit too much of a tinfoil hat on for his whole life. But the funny thing is, you don't necessarily know if it's ne necessarily a conspiracy or not at first. Because the way the game presents it to you, yeah, it seems like a conspiracy, but you're a detective. You're naturally like... Well, hold on a second. Sometimes conspiracies are real, and the game is able to play off that duality rather well in terms of, okay, is there something more to this? Is there actually something to this? Sometimes there may not be, but sometimes there will be. There will be something under the surface here. I also like the fact that there's little touches in the storytelling here, like the thank you to, you know, certain web designers or certain people in terms of the community in question. It connects people together. And a lot of these, you know, detective games or these, you know, sort of simulation 90s games sort of forget that connection, how people were connected that back then. So I really do appreciate the level of detail within this. Finally, let's go to an unlisted page that I found. The Workers Alternative. That's right. We have communism in the game. Socialism, to be particularly specific. And the funny thing is, it goes into another conspiracy about Gumshoe Gooper, who is this cartoon, who is, you know, everybody is loving Gumshoe Gooper, and the fact is, it's part of a socialist propaganda state. Wait, what? Yep, you heard me. And that's the funny thing. You wonder about it because you see it all over the place and the people who put it on their page just seem a little bit too... It's like you can put thoughts in their head. It's like they are part of a collective. And that's what's weird about it and it makes you think about, well, wait a minute, what's going on here? This is the kind of storytelling that allows a imaginative mind to run free. And I love all the stories in the case of the variety of stories and how 
it doesn't necessarily stick to a formula. Yeah, there's conspiracy theories on here, but they all have their own unique twist. There are things about, you know, personal stories, about, you know, poetry and, you know, songs and things like that, but they all have something that is unique to them that don't follow a pattern, or at least don't follow a pattern in the overall scheme of the game. All right, let me sum up with my final thoughts. Hypnospace Outlaw is a game that I would have people try a demo or buy the game with the idea of Steam refunds in mind. The reason I say that is simple. It's a game that's very out there in terms of its style, of its themes, and for certain people, the game is going to completely miss for them when it comes to the detective style gameplay specifically or the content it covers in the 90s. It's a game that you can get lost in easily, which can be a strength for this type of game, but for others it will be a weakness. It's part of the difficulty of reviewing it in an objective manner. A lot of the weaknesses of a game like Hypnospace Outlaw are very subjective and are specific to each player, in terms of taste, in terms of implementation, and the content it covers. But here's the thing. This game had a specific audience in mind, and that was clear via the marketing and the way that the game was presented. And that's what I base these scores off of, the overall opinion. The fact is, is that Hypnospace Outlaw delivers when it comes to the off-the-wall goofiness, the underlying storyline that drives it forward with a little bit of mystery here, a little bit of intrigue there and just these side stories that make you want to know more about the world in question and what is under the surface. Finding that next unlisted page, finding these files and having a virus appear on your screen and figuring out how you deal with that. That's part of the fun of this game, just exploring, exploring, exploring. The one big weakness in my head is the fact that if there's a certain element that you just don't get your head around, and you just don't understand the concept of, sometimes the game doesn't really do a good job of giving you a hint. Yeah, there are certain times that you don't necessarily want to give a hint, but unfortunately, there are certain times where, yeah, you need something to guide you. You are in the woods here with a compass, but you don't know what woods you're in, and you don't know if you're going to fall off a cliff rather easily. So a little bit more guidance would be nice, but I do like the fact that they were consistent in their hands-off approach in certain areas while getting you up and running in the first several hours. A good mixture of music and sound design in terms of the way that things click, the way that things interact with each other, help drive the narrative of the 90s effect home here. The fact is, this feels like I'm in my basement playing, you know, an old game or going through that file system and the early days of the internet. Its uniqueness in the genre also should be mentioned here. The fact is, is that there isn't really any game that I can think of that comes close to what experience this game has to offer in terms of its not only detective-like style, not specifically like Oberdin, but something a bit different, but this content itself, the 90s, the overall appeal of this, you know, early internet era. Now, again, this is not a final score. This is a score based off the first eight hours. Realize that. But if I had to give a score on my buyability score right now, this is an 88 out of 100. Meaning it's a solid buy unless you're hurting for cash. But as always, that doesn't include my enhancer system, which takes the more subjective elements of games like these and put score modifiers on them to adjust the score to your specific needs. If you fall into one of these categories, add or subtract that score to the main score. If the first digit of your score changes, then refer to this guide in terms of where it lies on the buyability scale for you. As you can see here, this game can be very, very decisive depending on your wants. So. I would recommend that even though some people ignore the enhancer system, take a look for it here. 
Now, I'm not going to ask you to subscribe or like the video, but I do want actually a lot of comments on the actual flow of this video and the actual quality of this video. This is using a format and a method that I came up with during my top 10 list because I want to get content out on a more regular basis. And the way that I was covering content in terms of my reviews and my critical eyes before, they had their downsides in terms of time. I do want to cover more games, in particular games like Hypnospace Outlaw. Those ones that people are interested in but maybe don't want to take a chance on or the ones that no one have heard of. So if this format worked for you, leave your comments in the comment section below. If you preferred my old style, you know, leave that in the comment section below. Anything that will help me improve this sort of process. Anyway, this is Dragonic signing out. There should be a stream on Wednesday, and I believe it'll be either Saturday or Sunday for the next one. But as always, keep on gaming.